Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the series on chasing the Grandmaster title through competitive chess. This is episode number four in episodes one and two, and so far this one, I am playing against an anonymous titled player named I Hate Rook A4. Uh, every time we play a game with white and a game with black, and then I analyze, and episode three was me puzzle solving. So, appreciate your support thus far. I've got nothing else to say. Here we go. Uh, by the way, this says half-half up here uh, because we actually just drew a game. <laughs> because I started it with the wrong time format. So disregard the half pointers. Last time we practiced the Karo Khan, I played the move C5. This time I'm gonna go Bishop F5. Now I believe my opponent likes to play H4 and I've got us a little surprise prepared there. Um, but, uh, okay, he plays Knight C3, very interesting. So it looks like he is surprising me first. He is looking for Knight C3 and G4. Aha, uh -huh. okay, I'm gonna go with, um, I don't have any surprises myself in these lines, I don't think. So I'm gonna go e6. And basically what white likes to do here is play g4, h4, knight e2. So I'm gonna go here. Now knight e2 is the best move because if you play h4, I will just go h5. Now, I don't remember the best move here. Uh, there is some modern theory to this position, uh, but I believe the best move here is c5. Just immediately going uh, for an attack in the center of the board. Uh, anticipating uh, h4 to be met with h5, knight f4, and bishop back to h7. Although, I do know some GMs play like h6 here sometimes. In some of these positions, I'm going to go with what I know. I, I, I don't really want to reinvent the wheel. Um, I don't even think that's the right term there. Uh, and now bishop to h7. Now my opponent could go g5. That is a move that I could see. Ah, <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> ah, I knew. So this move I've seen in Blitz. I've seen it in Blitz chess, and I don't know much about it. Um, it doesn't look like it's supposed to make any sense. That's what I'll say about it. Because you just put all four pawns here, but g6 is a possibility. So the first thing that I think about, if what if I just stubbornly move outside of the pawn chain, because I know you want to go g6. I don't actually know what the best move is. Pawn takes d4 is an idea. Knight to c6, pressuring that, is an idea. <clears throat> um, also, this is hanging. So I gotta, I gotta figure out what's going on here. Queen h5. Cd4 is very forcing, knight c6. I wanna go with what I think is the most solid option. I don't know if this is the best move. What I do know is that uh, I don't want to get my bishop logged back. I don't actually have any idea what the theory is, which is good. This is why we do the training games. Uh, clearly, my opponent is, is well familiar. That's why he's blitzing out some moves. Now, I'm thinking to go g6. So that my opponent can never go g6 himself. That might take him totally out of his comfort zone. Now, there's also moves like d4 which attack the knight. Uh, knight d7 puts pressure on both pawns. Knight e7 to go knight g6 is another idea. I'm just going to go g6, and hopefully now I've taken him out of what he knows. And if I haven't, then that's a problem. Now we have to play. So the good thing for me, everything is split, and white is pretty overextended. Um, the bad thing for me, I'm down a pawn for a very brief moment. I want to take back on c5, but I, I could come under some fire. Uh, if my opponent maybe goes b4 or something like that. Um, and now we will... Sorry, I'm, I'm playing around with other tabs, actually. I started this training game the second I already launched the YouTube video. So, I've been on the grind. Um... Bishop to d3. I'm not cheating, I promise. Okay, bishop d3. Uh, so, the thing about my opponent having five pawns over here on dark squares means the light squares are really juicy. Now, if I take on d3, then I think my opponent wants to move the knight back and stabilize their center. If I play knight to e7, that blocks my bishop, which means that knight to b5, knight in here, could be a problem. So, bishop c5 is obviously... It's nice. Um, what else is there? 
if I play knight e7, here is, that's very unpleasant. I really don't want to allow that. But if I take, then the knight comes back to d3, and the center is kind of stable, although there is maybe knight d7. There also could be a move like d4. So I think I'm going to take, or maybe knight c6. Hmm. Tough. And tough to evaluate all this on the fly and while calculating. I want to do this. But I also don't want to ever allow g6. I think I'm going to take. I'm not thrilled about it. But I need to like start actually playing some moves. Rather than just sitting here and going, I don't like that. And I kind of also don't like that. You know, I just got to go. Uh, here comes knight d7. So now I threaten c5. Now, b4 is a move, but looks a little idiotic. Uh, opponent might play it and just kind of go, all right, you think it's idiotic, you got to beat me. Bishop b3 to defend this, I thought I had queen c7, which I now realize I don't have completely, because there could be some knight b5 stuff attacking my queen. But queen c7 attacks both pawns, so that's an always useful move. And I need to remember something. Even though I'm a pawn down, white structure is terrible. Like, it's really bad, and it's very overextended. So part of me just kind of wants to slow play this. Like, maybe go knight e7, knight f5, and just go try to get the bishop and damage the structure. Knight e7 here, there is check on a5, so the knight would be forced back. Uh, so either queen c7, I'm going to go here, because I, I like this. Uh, this move also carries another idea, which is to either go to f5, which I just said, but also to go to c6 and pressure this pawn. And if I can get white to commit to another pawn being pushed forward, that it just seems like some sort of moral victory. Like, even though I'm a, I'm a pawn down, I mean, everything in white's position looks just on the verge of collapse. And if I can break through, none of this is going to be good in the endgame. So... We'll see. We'll see. It's a structural fight. Very, very complicated position. <clears throat> I also have half a burrito over there. Um, and uh, I really want it. I ate like, nah, it's like 20% of a burrito. I, 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 I wolfed down a burrito before I recorded this training episode. This is what my life is like. Um... I have to shove in food in, in between doing other various activities. This is the third video I'm going to record today. I don't know why you had to know that, but I don't have a lot of, you know, I don't have a lot of uh, time to just sit and, th and not think about the board, so I'm just using this as a, uh, as a, uh, as a therapy session. So... Um, yeah. So how you doing, YouTube? Okay, B4 is played. Um, 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 this, knight c6 looks juicy. So now knight b5 is a thing, because I don't have queen a5 check. So I really want to go here, but this move to get in here could be a problem. I need to evaluate it and make sure it's not completely... Problem. I can also just play a6 and never worry about that ever again. I don't know what I like. I kind of want to continue with my plan. Uh, also, knight c6 attacks e5 and threatens pawn up to d4, which... Pawn up to d4 on its own doesn't win anything, right? No, just bishop takes and I have nothing. So knight c6, maybe knight b5. To cover the d4 push, then I can go a6 maybe. I don't know. I really want to go a6 to stop the knight from coming to b5, but is that even something I need to worry about? That's another question. Maybe I'm overthinking this. And here, here, if I take, 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 bishop to d4 pins me. That's very annoying because bishop g7, there's knight d6. That's no good. a6 is okay, actually. I... Again, white has pushed a ton of pawns. And at some point is simply... <clears throat> is simply going to run out of moves. And I will be there on the light squares. And 
This is the thing about this G5 thing. When I pr I predicted it was going to happen, I think the main line instead of G5 is maybe to take on C5 first. But this has been trendy, and I've seen it, and I had a feeling my opponent would try to surprise me. But the problem is, even if I don't play the position correctly, uh, and we get to a position which is kind of exactly where we are, this is just so juicy. All those light squares. And you really start feeling silly for having overextended. So... Anyway, we have a minute difference on the clock, and it's really tough to find a plan here for white. It's also kind of tough to find a plan here for black, but... I think my position plays a bit easier. I can just kind of plot my pieces out here. I've really dealt with this knight infiltration. So now I can focus on next phase of the game. And my opponent could... Yeah, yeah, see? My opponent just kind of goes all in and... Is not backing down. We're gonna have we're gonna have a game where I'm gonna try to break out and my opponent is gonna try to suppress my movement. So I'm thinking knight f5. I mean this move just looks unbelievably natural. Queen e2 blunders knight g3, which would be uh, and d4. So I, yeah, I think bishop f2 is basically forced. Now d4 into just knight here. That doesn't. I don't win anything like that. Uh, I could consider an a5 move at some point. I'm thinking, I'm for now, just going to put my bishop on e7. My king is very safe if I castle, and it's probably going to happen that the opponent will play knight e2 and try to trade my knight. I'm ready for that. I got to figure something out here. Maybe I can reroute to c6. Like, if my knight can get here, it actually pressures stuff. On d7, now that everything is protected by a pawn, it doesn't really pressure anything. And I'm always looking at a5. Like, that is going to be such a useful move for me to deal a blow to that pawn. Of course, a3 is coming, but I also have b6. So, that's, that's a little bit about this game. Maybe queen c7, queen c6, lining up on the diagonal and trying to go d4. There's knight e2. Um, b6 now. Takes, knight takes. b6, c6, knight back, attacks the pawn. And I think... I think I win it. I don't see any way for my opponent to, to deal with that. I'm going to go b6. The second that the opponent goes back, the second they make a backwards move and kind of tie their shoes together, here we are. Now we are threatening to take on c5, give a check at some point in the future. Or, you know, even, even just leaving the doubled c pawns there to be taken in the future. And of course, I am more than welcome. I'm more than welcoming another knight infiltration because the opponent is overextended. Uh, so b6 looks really, really nice. And soon I will also overtake on the clock, I think. This knight will be swapped. I'm not too worried. I might even go and take whatever. Because otherwise they'll take me and I'll have to damage my, my pawns. Now, I could damage my pawns, put them up like this, and then move my knight this way and reroute it. It's a very common idea. Like, re put it on the square where the pawn was. So my pawn goes here, and then I move my knight to e6. But that looks a little dumb. You know what I mean? That, that, that does not look particularly convincing. So opponent takes. I don't. I can't take on b4. I'm going to take on b6. And uh, that's a little soft. So for example, knight d4, knight c6. But I got to tell you, if this knight jumps all the way in and just takes my bishop, I don't really think... I mean, it's... I'd rather probably trade knights, but uh, I'm not going to lose sleep. I'm still down a pawn, though. Like, if the opponent just finds a way to stabilize everything and not blunder, I, I'm still a pawn down. I'm going to have to use my, my final pawn here to chip away. I'll probably have to castle at some point, so my king is out of the middle. Okay, so naturally I want to take. Do I have anything else? Why wouldn't I take? I can play knight into c4. I can also play a5, but then there's knight c6. It gets me thinking I should put my queen somewhere that covers that, like queen c7, but then knight f5. Have I improved my position? I don't think so. I'm going to take. Now I do need to worry about this move every now and then, uh, but it seems okay. It seems okay. So, what do we want? Do we want a5 this very second? We not want a5 this very second. And also throw in knight c4 and then go to a5. I'm going to deal with my weakness. 
I'm going to deal with my weakness. If pawn takes, I can take with the rook, or I can actually still jump into c4 because this pawn is so terrible and not do anything. So I'm still going to be a pawn down, but the opponent is quite overextended with the pawns on the king side. And those pawns could be endgame liabilities. Very messy position. I actually think that white is sort of okay, though. My position looks good, but... It, it's far from over, and it's, there's still a big fight ahead. But I'm, I'm going to try to solve my problems right away by playing a5. Could have maybe gone knight c4. Don't know. But this is how we're going to solve it. <clears throat> and opponent is thinking. So far, a very fun game. I'm, I'm having fun, win or lose. We're kind of fighting in my, in my backyard in the Karo Khan. I've played many positions in the Karo, and uh, I, think, I think once you play an opening enough, the moves kind of start flowing to you a little bit more naturally. Or if you're using an engine, but I, I, I'm not. Otherwise, I probably would have had a better position by now. But I don't. <clears throat> Guys are really thinking after a5. So there is a move here. Okay, please a3. I was going to say, it could, could be b5, like going for the pass pawn. Uh, I don't like a3. I, I want to just castle. Just castle the king. I think that's what I'm going to do. It's a very simple move. I don't need to think about it at all. I'm going to castle, and the ball is back in my opponent's court as his time takes under three minutes. And the position hasn't changed much at all. He pushed the pawn, and I castled. And I'm castling because my king is safe here. The only time I need to worry is if this pawn ever gets to f5, and do I take and open up this, or do I take and open up that? There's c3. I actually mentioned this kind of approach. I mentioned this approach um, when I was talking about stabilizing. Look at seven dark squared pawns. Isn't that nuts? I'm going to go queen c7. Uh, queen c7 instead of uh, d7, because queen d7 hangs a knight. <laughs> and also, I, I want space for my rook, so it's, it's kind of common to get a little bit off the back rank. So now my rook, which I just castled, is coming to the party. And opponent is still thinking. Nothing has gotten easier. Nothing. But now, at this point, I start thinking, all right, how do I take over this game? At a certain point, do I take, do I put my... Wow, king to e2! That might not even be a bad move, it's just kind of the shock value. Um, do I put my rook on c8 or do I play knight a4? And really, what do I want to trade? Maybe I want to like bring the bishop around to b6 to trade it. Oh no, knight a4 hangs a knight in one move. Let's not do that. So rook c8 or rook b8? Let's go rook fc8. I mean, I feel like it's very logical to activate my remaining piece, which is not playing. And now, now... I'm going to have to... Now, I could probably just do nothing. I don't need to push the pace. Look at my position. I mean, everything, everything's good. I'm pretty happy. But maybe if I put my knight on c4 and then I just slowly improve the position, I can get, I can get a winning advantage. Now, queen c4 is an interesting move, looking to trade queens, but I, I don't think I want to trade queens here. So I'm going to put my knight on c4 because that, that no move in my life has ever looked more natural. Although queen c6 and going to a4 also was okay. I, there's just something about the knight on a4 that doesn't make sense. And now we'll slowly improve. The c5 square, okay, is there anything... Is there anything there with this move? Is there anything there? b5 is the big question. If I allow b5 at a bad moment, I could get a very bad position. This could all go completely wrong. So, I need to be careful. I do need to be careful. I'm going to go here. And uh, just apply a ton of pressure there on the queen side. Still don't exactly know what I'm doing, but I could bleed my opponent's clock down with looming potential threats and then capitalize. Like, for example, now maybe I, I crawl up to c6. I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but neither does my opponent. That's the beauty of it. And then maybe I'll play queen a6 and line up something over here. That, that actually is something I like very much. I like this queen a6 idea. Oh, so the opponent is really trying to go for b5. Okay, well, now I probably should take. Maybe I shouldn't. 
Maybe taking is exactly what the opponent wants? <laughs> that loses a bit of stability. Take, take. I have take, take, knight b6, b5, queen c4. I'm going to go for it. I think if I trade the bishop for the knight, that's massive progress. The pawns are very scary. The way my opponent has now kind of turned this around on me looks mildly annoying. That is hanging, though. I am attacking that. And I want to go queen c4. Is king e3 a thing there? That is so ridiculous. If actually b5 here and king e3... No, a4 is hanging. No, no. b5, queen c4 is a problem. Yeah. Wow, takes. Wow. Okay. Here I go. I'm going right there. That was always the plan. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. If the knight moves, b4 hangs. Now, knight c5 is a thing. There could go knight c5. And just try to trade into an endgame. But I don't know. That looks pretty terrifying with your open king, which again is a, is a, is a problem of having moved all your pawns out like that. So I'm... I'm just saying, you know, now, now that I'm kind of threatening to get in here to d4, and I have, look at my time advantage. Oh, it's the problem. I'm starting to buy into the hype of my own position. That's like when things go wrong. Um, queen d4. Queen b5 also was interesting. But this is my plan. Maybe queen e4. b5. The fact that this is possible is nauseating. Uh, check. Here, I gotta. I also have bishop c5, knight c5, queen c5 with threats, but then there's queen d3. And queen d3 does seem to stabilize some stuff. Hmm. I'm gonna give a check. I don't exactly know. Don't exactly know what the plan here is. What? No way. No. No way. No way. Surely this doesn't. I am. I am in shock. <laughs> What? Okay. I, I, I'm actually, like, I might lose just because King D2 was played. I, I'm, I'm rattled to the core. I have no idea. I was not expecting that move at all. Wow. Um, okay, so here I actually thought about sacking my rook. And then playing bishop takes b6. Is that idiotic? That might be idiotic. Rook b6, rook b6. I'm also, I've also got ideas like d4, but the pawns are coming in here, and I am, I'm not thrilled about what's going on, but what about d4 to try to go... d4, queen e3, d4, queen e2, queen d5 attacks the pawn. There's some knight b4 stuff. Um, wow. I think I'm going to do it. I can't believe it's coming to this, but... Here comes bishop b6. Now I've got bishop e3 ideas, queen e3 ideas. The rook is hanging, obviously. Now, rook b6, rook b6, rook a8, king g7. That was my very quick calculation, that my king is still safe. Opponent decides to do it. I figured that my opponent would. Uh, and now, now I don't know what's going on. Queen a4 is a move, but then I have queen to g2. There's no mates, luckily. There's no mate. So even if the queen gets down here, I have king g7, and there's no mate. Going to take my opponent one more move. So my idea here is just the weakened king. Okay. Uh, of course, d4 looks very good. Um, check. There's queen e2. Maybe I can sneak around back to the back rank somehow. d4. Queen e2. Yeah, d4 looks really strong. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Uh, queen e2. 
That's also covered, so maybe just queen d5. If queen c6 attacking the rook, rook takes pawn. I don't see a check. I can also go all the way back there. I don't exactly see why I would do that, so I'm just going to go to d5. Looks like a very stressful position for white, which I like. I like stress. Please go here. That's a really bad move because I give you a check and then sneak around back. Okay, that move threatens my pawn. Mm hmm. Man, queen d4, huh? Hmm. Oh man. Oh man. I gotta make a move. Okay, I'm just gonna go down to h1. I don't know. I really thought I figured something out. Looks like I might have been mistaken. Here I go down to b1. I mean, it, I, I don't know what's happening, folks. We're both all in. I mean, I'm going to d1. There's a check down here, king h7, and that's it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have no idea what is happening. Not a clue. There it is. Um... Okay. Uh, <laughs> queen g2, king c3, queen c6. There's a check. If the king runs out this way, he runs out that way. Is it a draw? Oh, the king is going there? What? That's nuts. I let him escape. Wow. That is so brutal. That is so brutal. Yeah, I guess it's just losing. It's losing. The king escapes. All right, folks, uh, it's time to analyze some games. We're going to begin with the first one here. Uh, I'm actually recording this like a day later because I played those games and uh, I was actually very tired afterward. So I had to eat dinner. Um, different day, different shirt. Uh, different day, different shirt. That sounds like a good, good motto. Okay, so game number one. Um, the way you study this kind of stuff, uh, as I was saying during the game, is you need to review your openings. So everything up until this point is considered normal. I was actually shocked to find out that even though c5 is a massive main line, which is what I played in this game, nowadays there is so much theory here. Like the players are playing 97, 97, waiting moves, not, not going here. A lot of players been playing f6 anticipating a move like knight f4 um, with even pawn takes e5 or like bishop coming back to f7. It's like really, there's a lot, lot of stuff here. Really interesting stuff. Uh, now, the way we played it, c5, uh, h4, h5, knight f4, all the way here. In this position, I'm quite familiar with knight takes h5. Uh, and there is a, a line here which goes knight c6, dc i think and in this position there's like a line where you can play um 97 there's like a there's like a 97 somewhere here maybe this is not the exact move order but white can play bishop h6 it's like an absolutely fascinating move bishop h6 and uh if you take it there's knight f6 mate but my opponent play g5. Now, I'm not familiar with g5, and when I checked afterward, it turns out that, um, I mean, I'm familiar with it, I know it's a move nowadays, but I don't know what to do here with black, so I tried to play logically. It turns out the theory goes like this. C takes d4, attacking the knight. Now, not queen takes. 
Queen takes, there is knight c6. Now white plays knight b5 with a couple of threats. Number one, this is always looming. I've talked about knight b5 throughout that game. Knight takes d4. Um, and knight takes d4 coupled with bishop b5 check is really strong. So here, what black does is play bishop e4 to attack the rook, baiting this move f3. This is very common to bait that move to cut off the queen and also weaken the king a little bit. Now this, this, and knight e7. And here black is known to be completely fine. But, okay, I didn't do that. Instead, I played bishop to f5. And I tried to play this game in a way that was practical. Like just, you know, maybe not the best, but practical. And it turns out that my opponent should play this like fully committed to the pawns. Like play b4. Don't let me get anything I want. If I play a move like a5 looking to break out, it's not going to work. Because after knight b5, if I play a takes b4, he gives me the, the pawn and jumps in with the knight. And this is just, this is very bad for black, borderline losing. Because what ends up happening is, is the pawns go to a place that I can no longer fight them. These pawns completely box in my knight, which blocks in my rook, and I'm completely lost here. I, I, there's, no, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to slowly suffer and then probably lose. So, b4 had to... Oh, I backed up way too much. b4 had to be played. This uh, allowed me to go after my opponent's bishop. Now, the reason I didn't rush my play here with knight f5 is because I didn't actually think I was threatening to take this. Like, I thought that perhaps my opponent could just, I don't know, do anything here. Uh, or knight b5, for example. But the computer really likes knight takes, f takes. And I thought this position was just bad for me. Um, and I'm not completely wrong. I just missed something here. I missed, like, that in this position, it looks like this is coming. I missed that I can take on c5. And if knight takes, I take. If pawn takes, I have queen a5 check. So I'm going to win back this knight. So this is like the one thing. It's always important to keep in mind this side queen check that can hit the king in the knight. Um, yeah, I completely missed that. But okay, it's life. Uh, a6, stopping knight b5, and now f4. Now white is better. Now white is definitely better here because white is just the pawn up. I mean, at the end of the day, that's really what matters, right? So I played bishop e7. Computer actually doesn't think I should go bishop e7. It thinks I should go b6 right away. I sort of was lamenting not playing this move during the game faster. I played it here, but here there's a major difference. Uh, the major difference being that white gets the knight to d4 just in time for my counterplay. Whereas if I had played the move b6, it really fundamentally doesn't matter where this bishop is because it's doing the exact same job. And for example, cb6, knight b6, this knight is just stupid. This is just a stupid knight. It's just not doing anything. And now if white tries to go back and go here, I mean, that's actually probably the best thing to do, by the way, then at least I can maybe even play d4. Like, I'm in time now to occupy the square. And then maybe queen d5 attacks the rook, then rook d8, maybe then maybe a5. The problem is I waited with bishop, like bishop e7 doesn't do anything. I, my bishop serves the same role, and one move kind of allowed my opponent to consolidate. And then it was a very complex game, like from here on out. Uh, white is just better, and I and I kind of was mentioning as the game progressed that once my opponent consolidated, they would probably have the advantage, uh, and he did. Um, and I finally came up with this idea to put my queen on a6. Uh, the problem is I completely ended up overlooking this move a4. I don't know why this move completely escaped me, because this is obviously the only way white can make progress, but we were also making moves pretty quickly. It's actually why the computer wants me to take on b4. And after a before a before, my opponent only has one pawn that can march down the board, not two. And I kind of have that pawn pretty well blockaded. And the machine just evaluates that there's a, a, a quagmire here, if you will. Mutual stalemate. Nobody can really make any progress. I didn't do that. Uh, I allowed a4. Uh, and once play got allowed right around here, computer just thinks that uh, white is winning. Uh, and then here my opponent responded with a mistake. This is a very bad trade. You do not want to activate my queen like this. Very bad trade. Uh, help allowing my queen to go here and then playing b5. Just kind of all in with the pawns. However, when I gave this check, I knew well that king f2 was the best move and I was just sort of hoping to figure something out. And I predicted that when king d2 happened, I would be very scared. And I was right. King d2 is not a good move. It's now minus 1.8, but only because I have one way to play this position for a win and it's to cut off the c-file with rook c8. The reason I didn't go for rook c8 is I didn't really understand what my next move was. I mean, I, I, bishop b4 is impossible. And for example, if I play d4 to try to play queen e3, like just a queen move. I didn't really see what the plan was. 
Well, what I missed is that after b6, the idea of rook c8 is to give this check over here. The point being that if queen e2, rook c2, and I deflect the king away from the queen, and if the king goes up, then I have just the absolutely savage rook c4. That's mate. And it's almost impossible to prevent. It's forced mate in this position. Rook c8 I did not see. And bishop d8 I thought, you know, with our both mutual time, okay, I'm going to create an attack on the king. Here the engine is an absolute scumbag and finds rook c5, which is just disgusting. And white keeps the full rook. I can't take because I would hang this. So there's nothing I can do. I'm I mean, this is just, it cuts off e3. I'm just dead lost. But okay, I didn't see that. My opponent didn't see that. Instead, sacrificing. And this is, um, this is winning for white. This is winning for white. What, what I thought was like a low time effort to create some play, this is completely lost. Totally lost position. The knight completely covers the checks. And as you saw from my expression, absolutely devastating uh, to lose in this fashion. Now, my biggest mistake was definitely allowing a4 and b5. Uh, if I had not allowed a4 and b5, actually it would have been just a pretty complex game that most likely would have ended with something like this and just impossible for white to break through. Nice little shot there. Good resource by my opponent to find this a4 idea uh, and not finding rook c8, of course, when king d2 was played. Uh, but low time will do that. I mean, I really, a game like this is, uh, is a fun one. I mean, it, you can't feel too bad for losing. And uh, now I know what to do against g5 for all my future games. So on to game two. Okay, it is time for the second game. Uh, I told my opponent that I would be playing d4. Uh, and c4. And opponent is playing e6. I think I'll go with knight f3. I think opponent either plays b6 or d5 here. I think his main line is d5. So there it is. And I've got a couple of ideas for what I want to go about. I was debating a couple of openings, but I think I'm going to go with the traditional knight c3, and I think he plays the semi-slav. I think he has nothing else in his repertoire. Uh, that's not to insult his openings. Uh, that's just reality. And now I'm going to go with g3. This is one of my favorites against the semi-slav defense. He takes on c4. Uh, and now I will play bishop to g2. You also in these positions can play knight e5 and try to win this pawn back immediate, immediately, but I like to delay. Here black has two choices. One is knight d7 preventing knight e5, and one is b5, which is the main line. Now these positions are a little bit tricky to play with black. You have really a massive lack of space. White dominates the center. White can oftentimes open up this bishop. White can castle. Uh, and there's b5. Now I need to remember, I think knight e5 is, is my line here. Uh, because you need to attack the weakened c6 pawn. And there's three lines here. There's a6, there's queen b6, and then there's bishop to b7. I think he'll play a6. I think. I think that's probably going to be his move. Or queen b6. I don't think he'll go bishop b7. Actually, can you go king and go bishop b7? Because knight b5? If takes, I take the bishop. I don't know. We'll see. I do know that for a fact, like, I faced queen b6 before. And um, I've also played against uh, a6. There's also maybe knight d5. Knight d5 might be the move. That, that might be what I'm thinking about. Knight d5. To get in the way of the bishop. And then play is pretty dynamic and interesting. But I really like these positions because, you know, black just kind of takes up the challenge. You get a bishop. Opponent is deep in thought. So last game, I kind of surprised my opponent. And this game, uh, reverse. Last game, my opponent kind of surprised me. And this game, I am, you know, returning the favor. <clears throat> Quite a bit. I'm feeling good. Recovering psychologically after getting my soul taken last game. Okay, queen b6 is played. Now I think I castle here and play b3, if I'm not mistaken. So let's do exactly that. Let's play short castle and play this move b3. Now I've actually had this in a game before. <clears throat> um, like basically this exact position. Uh, b3 takes and queen takes. 
Um, that was a very, very standard. I think there is also AB3, which is an idea to sacrifice a pawn and just have the open rook. Uh, but I've had, I've had a position with queen b3, bishop b7, and I completely misplayed that game. So this game I'm going to try to do better. Queen d4 is not hanging. Uh, it looks like it might be, but it's really not. I have like knight takes b5 ideas, and yeah, it's, it's just not hanging at all. And now I think black's basically only move is bishop e7 and castles. There might be knight d7. Might be knight d7. But my line and what I remember goes bishop e7. And then I have a couple of ideas here. I think one is to just bring my rook and play bishop g5 and sometimes even take on f6, be solid with my e pawn, bring the knight back to d3, and basically just play a position where I'm a pawn down, but I kind of have this sort of similar to last game, queen takes d4 is played. Uh, I think this might lose on the spot. I think I have knight takes b5. If queen takes this, I have bishop f4 with knight c7 coming. If knight b5, queen a1, isn't knight c... Isn't this just game over? I think my opponent might have just blundered. Which is one of the thi Look, if I win this game in the next five moves, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say, this is why you probably shouldn't rush in a position where you don't know <laughs> your opponent's preparation. Uh, you don't know what potential land, land, you know, landmines you might be walking through. Like, this is one of the reasons I, I love this line with white. It's so dynamic. It's so interesting. There's all sorts of tactics flying around. And uh, queen e5, bishop f4 to get into c7 is a problem. If queen takes knight, that bishop is completely unstable. And a8 is just hanging. But I do need to be precise because the queen can still go back. Oh, but if the queen goes back, I have bishop e3. And I just, I, I, I win tempo. And if you're watching this and you're like, why is he not mentioning this move? Well, then I would go knight c7. Okay, so after a long period of thought, uh, my opponent has played queen e5, which I think is probably the best attempt. And now I'm going to go bishop f4. So queen is hanging, knight c7 is there. If queen takes here, I take, take, and I'm down two pieces, but I win one of them back, and then I win the rook. So I'm just going to be an exchange up. I don't really see much else. I mean, you play queen c5, then I play check, and then I take on b7, and it's even worse. So, yeah, kind of kind of nuts, um, to be honest. <laughs> I would, you know, it'd be interesting. I'd, I would be down to, uh, I know we're only supposed to play two games, but I'm going to ask my opponent if he wants to run it back and uh, not take on d4. Just so we get some more practice. I mean, otherwise it's going to be kind of, you know. It's not, I, I, I didn't really train this game. <laughs> I just played a couple of moves and then my opponent made a blunder. Okay. So, I decided to try this once again. Uh, I don't want to win with queen d4, knight b5, although I will include it in the video because it, it is interesting that even title players can succumb to tricky and aggressive opening lines. And um, the best move here is bishop e7. That is what my opponent has to play. Knight d7. Now, I don't exactly remember the line here. So I need to think. Knight takes d7 is a move, whether it's the right move is a different story. I don't know. I'm always kind of figuring out whether or not a4 is an idea. I'm trying to figure out if bishop g5 is an idea. Rook d1 can't ever be bad. I don't remember what the best move is after knight d7, so I will need to think. If knight d7, knight d7, I do have dominant control of the center of the board. I could consider a move like e4, queen d4, and I'm sacrificing a second pawn for 
potentially speculative compensation. I'm not super thrilled about that idea, if I'm being honest. I do like rook d1. It's just kind of a nice move. And then if bishop e7... Maybe just takes, takes something with e4 and bishop e3, like two bishops, nice big center. And then we try to fight. Bishop g5 is potential, potential move. Actually, wait a minute. Rook d1, there could be take, take, knight g4. That could be really bad. But maybe there's knight e4 in that position. Knight e5. That's why, kids, you have to remember your lines. Don't end up like old Gotham here, trying to memorize his prep as he is moving through the game. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't remember, so I'm going to play Rook D1. I, I have no recollection of what the move is after Knight D7. So i got to review it. There we go. A5. Okay, so, I mean, this is not a very complicated move. Uh, the idea is to play a4. <laughs> I can play a4 my, myself, and then my opponent will probably play b4, at which point I've got to start contemplating moves like knight jumping into the middle of the board. A, a, I mean, a4, b4 is forced because otherwise I take, and if ba, that really weakens the queen side. I don't really, I don't really believe in that. Um, I'm gonna think here for a sec. I really like the idea of a4, b4, and then using something on c4. So potentially even just dropping my knight. Oh, but that doesn't work. I was gonna go knight c4, but there's queen a6 maybe. And I can't. But then I just move my knight. It's really not a big deal. I just move my knight to e4, for example. Knight takes, bishop takes. Maybe knight f6 comes in. Can bring my bishop back. This is definitely a threat. I, I also can consider rook b1. Rook b1, rook b1. Make a move that makes no sense. The question is, do I like where this queen is? For example, knight e4, knight takes, bishop takes. Oh, actually, there I can even throw in the take on d7. But okay, let's just say takes, takes. And bishop comes to c5. Yeah, that looks good for black. Because then f2 is hanging. It's not exactly what I want in the position. Knight b5 doesn't make any sense. That doesn't even, that's a move that doesn't even begin to make sense. So I'm not going to consider it. Uh, so knight c4 is the next thing that I have on my mind. And uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think I'm going to go for it. I think getting out of the middle, attacking the queen. Of course, if queen goes back to c7, then that's just terrible. I just played this. I, I, I do think queen a6 is the best move, but it's, it's, it's incredibly tricky. You know, if I isolate that queen there, and I just kind of move around without really addressing where it's standing, then... These pawns could be pretty big endgame liabilities because we can blockade them. Queen a7 is a move that I did not even think about. I wonder why. Something about this move must have just stuck out to me somehow. Like, okay, of course I have to move the knight. Knight e4. I don't want to trade pieces because I'm down a little bit of material. Um, but I actually i am getting some feeling that this is the right move. It just feels correct somehow. Like, I want to go in here. So probably we're going to get knight takes e4, bishop takes e4. I've removed one of black's active pieces. And then if bishop e7, I could, like, do something. I don't exactly know what it is, but just how passive my opponent is over there, I'm, get, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting tingly. You know what I mean? I'm getting tingly. Some ideas. For example, yeah, of course. And I just want to go back. I don't think this is super complex. Unless I am missing something. Can I shatter the board with d5? Probably not. This is just dumb. There's no reason to go that way. So I'm going to go back to g2. Uh, I'm 
Probably bishop b7, then maybe that's a little soft. So we can always, the good thing about these positions, we can always play bishop b2, rook c1, and very slowly, very slowly get our pawn back. Rook d8. Immediately what comes to mind. Also bishop g5 kind of comes to mind here. But then I think this move is going to get played. What about bishop f4 to try to go bishop c7? That looks unpleasant. That looks, <laughs> that looks extremely unpleasant, actually. That looks extremely unpleasant, I have to say. But there might be knight d5. I don't have a, also don't have a tremendous amount of time, so I should speed it up a little bit. Um, bishop b2, bishop to e7, rook to c1, short castle, and something like knight e5. And I am guaranteed to win this pawn back and probably have a little more than that. So I think I'm going to go the simple route. I don't think it's the most dynamic way of playing the position. I don't think that I am getting as much of an advantage as is possible, but it is one of the ways that I can play. Maybe bishop f4 was better, much more to the point. The remaining thing that I have is something with my pawns in the center, but I don't know. I'm trying to use slow positional grinding to get my, my pawn back and then maybe have a bishop pair like c1. All part of the plan. I'm starting to think that maybe there is some moment my opponent can play c5. Like if I play knight e5, c5, takes on c5. I don't know. I also have bishop b7, queen b7, dc5. And uh, I'm just the pawn up there. So that, 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 I don't think that works. Okay, after some long thought, opponent has castled. I'm going to continue with our plan uh, of targeting the c6 pawn. I did mention a while back this was going to be the major focal point of our assault. And, you know, it's interesting. It's one of these positions where we, we go from one attacker on the pawn to and one defender to three it's very rare you can like make a move and immediately two pieces threaten and the truth is i think knight c6 is my threat forcing bishop takes and then you know i take with my rook and i i go to work but bishop c6 doesn't look that bad either i have to say opponent plays rook c8 and of course knight c6 is an idea I think I want to do something before the move knight d5 happens, but um, I gotta think about this. Bishop c6 takes takes. Which piece do I want to survive into the end game? Now, my, my instinct tells me just play knight c6 and you'll figure it out later. Now knight d5 is not a thing anymore because you've removed the knight's buckle. Uh, I don't know why... He's thinking he has to play bishop c6. Perhaps he's thinking about what's next. And now my, my, my thought process is, do I, do I take with the rook? I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to take with my bishop. I like that it kind of just covers some squares. And maybe I can rotate my queen to support it more. Maybe I can plant it on b5, I have to say. The bishop being planted on b5 is pretty nice, but it doesn't do much, you know? Like the bishop on g2, it controls the whole board. Whereas the bishop on b5, look, okay, it fights for those squares, but do I want those squares? It's not very clear. I like that my opponent can't move. So as much as my opponent is probably feeling negative about this position... Little do they know, I also don't know what to do next. Do I trade one rook? Do I trade both rooks? I'm leaning toward trading both rooks. If we trade queens and rooks, the way I would play this is to advance as much in the center as I can, bring my king over to b5 and win the game. I actually think this endgame is pretty trivial to play with white. The problem is how and when exactly do I make the trades? That's the question. I'm not very good at endgames. I, I rush things too much. So, 
Maybe now I can just bring it back, you know, or to F3. I'm going to go back to F3. Offering the trade of rooks on my terms. So, you know, we, we can swap rooks, but it'll be the way I want to swap rooks. I'm not going to have a bishop over on c6 as a target. Now, I think my opponent will probably bring pieces to the middle. Like, knight d5 is just an easy pawn blunder. I take and I take. I would imagine that he wants the bishop on f6. And I think my next plan is maybe I should have gone rook c4. Maybe that's what I should have done. Maybe I should try to dominate the c-file. So rook c4, double up on the c-file, trade rooks on my own terms. I'll control the only open file on the board, and then I need to figure out what to do with the dark squared bishop. If I can play e3, and at the same time the bishop is over there, and my bishop's laser beam the diagonal, that could be good. That's an interesting move. That stops rook c4. So again, slow playing this position is an option. Um, e4, which I... Really didn't want to do. Yeah, queen d7 is a very strong move. Mm, e3, knight d5. Yeah, if the knight gets to c3, it's like really not good. I probably have to play here. I'm not thrilled that I have to play this move. I was really trying to go a while without playing this move. Okay, takes, takes. Rook c8 the idea. Rook c8 is the idea. But I think the problem with this is that I can take and play e5. Unless I'm stupid. Which could be the case. But I think that now that knight d5 is no longer playable, I think I can get away with this. It's not so clear who wants the rook trades in this endgame. Oh, my opponent has disconnected. Never mind. For example, knight d7, d5. Looks like I have a pretty strong initiative here. But yeah, I think I, I'm, I'm pretty sure allowing queen d7 was bad. I did something incorrect. I should have, instead of retreating for no reason, just because my bishop was kind of awkwardly positioned there, that's why I retreated. I should have just added more pressure to where the bishop was standing, like rook c4 doubled up, etc. There it is. Um, I'm thinking d5. Threat is, of course, to take. And also to play d6. I mean, if I get to play d6, I'm, I'm probably just doing very well. But yeah, de is, of course. If pawn takes, I will go with the bishop. f7 is very soft. Knight c5, I just go queen c4. And the pin here should be sufficient for very good play in this endgame with my activity. So the pressure is paying off with the bishop here. I think I think uh, I made an inaccuracy allowing him to play queen d7 and stabilizing, and he made an inaccuracy trading the rooks too quickly and letting me overwhelm him in the center. Also, he seems to have trouble with internet right now, which is good, because I'm trying to win. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, bishop d4 is kind of dumb, right? Because knight d5. Okay, I'm going to go d6. Uh, I think it only makes sense to play that move. I don't know why I would not. I don't know if queen c4 is an idea for my opponent here. It could be. It could be. It could be not so simple for me. I thought it was going to be easy once I got my pawn on d6, but it looks like maybe I was incorrect. Bishop d4 is definitely a move I want to play. I think I'm going to do it. My king is always safe, which is nice. I can always throw some stupid h-pawn at my opponent, but that, I, I don't know. That doesn't strike me as super convincing. And I think this, this will, yeah, so there's queen c4. Um, queen e3, knight takes this...
Uh, <laughs> maybe Queen E4 to try to get to the back rank. I like how it looks. I just don't know how good it is. Queen goes back to C8. It looks like it should be so good. Of course, we can also trade queens. You know? Also trade queens. I don't want to trade queens. What about queen d1? b3? Bishop b2? Queen f4? Take, take, d7. Bishop here. Queen c1. No, then queen takes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really want to play this move, but unfortunately, I have just simply no idea if it works or not. What a shame. Ay, ay, ay. I'm going to spend all this time and end up doing something dumb. Ah, chess is such a difficult game. can get these truly marvelous positions and just mess them up. I guess I'm going to take. I really didn't want to do that. But it's life. Bishop e2. And maybe f4. Did not see anything better, unfortunately. Now, here I do still have some nagging, annoying pressure with my bishop pair. Like, maybe I still have some decent chances. But this is definitely not what I envisioned when the endgame began. Uh, I take, take some bishop move. I'm going to play f4. I'm going to try to keep my, my pawn on d6 as protected as possible. Okay, that's... Move makes a lot of sense. King f2. Like b3 doesn't accomplish anything, I don't think. Doesn't, doesn't do anything. Now I need to decide if I'm moving my king toward this pawn or toward the middle. There's not a lot of time. Plus I have connect 5, so I basically just won the game anyway. Could be some mating nets. Could be like some accidental king g, you know. Okay, that is a move. I don't... What does it do? Um, okay, I'm going to go king e2. If knight here, of course, I, I, I think I'm just taking and trying to go king d3 and winning myself a pawn. Wow. I did not expect that move. How about f5? f5 looks dumb. Pawn takes g5. Pawn takes e5. Bishop e5. Bishop here. Or just king f3. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Unfortunately, uh, there's not a lot of time on the clock, and I want to keep the position simple, and I feel like if it gets tactical, only one person is happy. If b3, I just, take the, I just get the pawn. So that pawn's not going anywhere. A move like bishop b6 is very interesting. Okay, takes, takes. Opponent has 10 seconds. Ooh. Ooh, that closes the position. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Let's go bishop c4. I kind of want to take. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And now let's be patient. Bishop b3. Maybe I have a way to win this. Maybe I need to get my pawn to h5. Maybe that's how we're going to go about this. Um, king e3. Or can I just infiltrate with my king? Uh-huh. Here, knight g6. What about bishop d1, bishop h5? Okay, let's go. Um, 
Bring it back. Nothing scary. Wow. <sighs> My opponent is brave. King c4. And King b5. I don't... I don't know if I'm winning or, or what's going on here. I have no idea. Uh, that looks like something, I guess. Somehow my opponent has a blockade on stuff, which is amazing. Let's go here. If h4, yeah, I'm going to go h3. So now there's no movement on that side. And then I have an idea to play king b7, and it's mate, which is absolutely brutal. That's just not very nice by me. That is checkmate in one move. <laughs> so now they have to really get out of there. And uh, that's hanging. And now that I've made it through, we, the pressure pays off and we win. Okay, so that one, that one was a fascinating one. Uh, that was a uh, g3 semi-slav, and uh, after bishop g2, there's, there's two ways for black to play this. Like, first of all, there's actually two ways for black to play this, period. One is to take on c4, one is not. Some people just get this setup and they never take on c4. They like this, but it's a little bit passive if you play like that, but I've had people play like knight d7, for example. Uh, knight d7 also works in this move order because you can go here and prevent what white wants with e5, uh, with knight e5 and then kind of opening the bishop. So I've seen this before as well. But this allows white to play a4, so it's a trade-off. Like, you can't play b5 now. I mean, you, you, you can try to play b5, you can play like bishop b4. Very imbalanced position oftentimes. White is just a pawn down, but tries to take the full center. Anyway, kind of exactly what I was going for. Uh, as you saw from the video, uh, my opponent ended up blundering uh, early, and we ended up just continuing the game from this position, knight d7. Uh, and the analysis actually, during the game, you remember I was saying I don't know knight d7, it's not in my notes, etc. Uh, it's not in my notes for a reason. Turns out that here white is much better after bishop e3. Now that is not a move that I was going to find over the board. Uh, I don't even remember now analyzing it a day later if I looked at this move, and the idea of this move is just like if takes takes and white wins because of the queen and the knight hanging. And if white doesn't take, then uh, black doesn't take, then d5 is the threat. And it's really hard to move the queen. For example, if you move the queen back to its home square, you blunder c6 or b5. If you go to c7, uh, then I go here. And I, I just keep following you. Or I play rook c1 and your, your queen just has nowhere to go. Which is why you have to play bishop e7. Because if I play bishop e3 now, d5 is a lot less powerful d5 is a lot less powerful, and knight to d5 just blocks all of that. Whereas you cannot do that after you play knight d7. You cannot go here, because I take. Now you are stuck in the center forever. Now I'll just move my knight, move my bishop, and... Right, so the, the, that's, that's the difference between the two. Now I made a mistake, and we ended up getting a position where I made another slight mistake. Knight c4 was not a good plan. This was not a good plan of action. I liked it, and I thought that getting to a position like this was smart. Well, it's not, and I'll show you why. It's actually better for me to, uh, in this position, not move my knight at all. Leave the queen where it is, put my knight to e4. This is what the computer likes. Here's why. Because if we get the same position that we kind of got in the game, like this position, the queen is not kicked out, but my knight is also very strong. My knight is pressuring important squares, and if black just plays like bishop e7, um, I can move my bishop, double up right away. Whereas if I put my knight on c4, I had to move it back to e5 anyway. You see, not much has changed. The key resource in all of these positions in the, um, in the semi-slav and kind of just period uh, is, is whether or not black can play c5. Whether black can play c5 or not, in a lot of Karakhan positions as well. And it turns out that, I mean, I thought this move was just not possible. I thought opening the position like this before you're even, you're a move away from even being a move away from castling doesn't make sense. I thought, you just can't do this. I'll do something like this. Yeah, well, of course, the computer finds a way. Uh, it wants to take, give a check to move off the line of my bishop. And then if I play f3, the computer just goes all the way here and says, I'm fine. Good luck. Bishop f6, well, of course, I'm not going to take and hang this. Yeah, gf6, doesn't matter. I'm fine. Don't know if this is that easy to do as a human. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I thought that like something like this was actually pretty scary for black. No, computer's not faced. I open my king. I'm still gonna castle. 
So, in a classical game, I would need to definitely uh, be a little bit careful here with moves like A4 for the future. Allowing this pawn to stand here very triumphantly is a little bit scary. Um, probably what I should have done is like develop my bishop and then on B4 just been ready to go to A4 uh, or on A4 just been ready to come back, essentially. I should not have indulged with A4 because what ended up happening in the game is that my opponent never played C5. Because my opponent never played C5, it made C5 impossible. Just made C5 impossible. Rook C8. And psychologically, he was under pressure for some time. Um, I really regretted during the game just wasting a move here going back to F3. I should have made progress by doubling my rooks and defending the pawn. But actually, the computer always evaluates the position as equal. Uh, all the way down here, in fact, it still thinks the position is completely equal. And the move that we both thought gave me advantage was a blunder. So this move is a mistake. Because actually, this move is possible. Crazy. If I take on d5, e takes d5, and go for this, queen c2, my bishop is trapped. My bishop is just completely trapped. Now here I have one way to force a draw. One way, otherwise I'm just in serious trouble, that's not made of course. One way to force a draw, e6. It's the only way. Right? e f7, queen a8, all these different ideas. For example, if queen takes b2 here, now this is winning because I have e7. That's how I would win here, but that's not going to happen. Uh, yeah, we both just basically thought that after this, we, I was better. And I, and I, and I kind of was. The way my opponent let me do this, I definitely got a very advantageous endgame. Uh, and it turns out that the way I played this, to kind of get this, to, to this bind, you have to team up your bishops with your pawns, this bind is very good for white. Uh, truly. And during the game, I wasn't super confident that I would be able to win this during time trouble. I also should have 100% shut down my opponent's play here with h4. That way the move g5, trying to break everything apart, just doesn't work because of takes, takes, and f5. And the idea of f5 is not to come here, not to do this. No, you don't want this. Um, although this is apparently also winning with some absurd computer idea. Uh, but uh, which I'll just show you is g4. Because after pawn takes g4, black has no more moves. <laughs> black is completely out of moves. Like black cannot move the bishop. Oh my god, that is actually insane. Like look here, black is actually completely powerful. That is nuts. Look at that position. Black can't move anything. Computers are just absolute pieces of trash. I mean, look at that. Disgusting. H4 I take. Wow. But basically, the way that this endgame ended up happening is my opponent just sort of ran out of things to do. Like, he kind of dug his own grave a little bit in the time trouble. And the computer thinks that, like, you can, you can kind of hold on here. But it was always going to be really difficult. And I found this nice idea to activate my king. This, this idea basically wins the game to activate the king. Uh, make sure there's no counterplay, shut down the whole side over there, and then we, we, fi we found this really nice king a6 and king b7. That's checkmate. So once the king uh, is kicked out and this bishop stays paralyzed, that's really, really bad. And generally the rule of thumb here would be always try to look for the active defense in endgames because my opponent did not do the active defense. And this is right around the time I, re I started realizing that I could actually win the game. Also shows you the power of the bishop pair and a space advantage in knight versus bishop situations. Some of you might be wondering why this pawn never moved. It's because it couldn't. The second that this pawn goes, where is it going beyond that? One square is not good enough. Just because you can take the next step, one, make a one move attack, doesn't mean it's good enough. Because this king's just going to come right over. So the pawn is actually much safer on b4 being a permanent threat to move. But it, my opponent was never able to do it. Anyway, folks, I'm pretty sure this was a long video. I'm going to edit this all together and see how long it is. Once again, if you've made it this far, I appreciate your constant support in my journey. Uh... If uh, you ever want to support the cause, like for the tournaments or whatever it is, there's obviously donation links, but you could also get yourself a course on my website. Link is in the description. Or, 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 or you can always sign up for chess.com premium because all of the biggest streamers get uh, some commission on that. Actually, all streamers do. But uh, that's another way that you can, you can support any uh, one of us that you like. Take care. I'll see you in episode five. Get out of here.